Okay, welcome. Uh, today we are going to learn how to cook a steak in a cast iron pan. Uh, it is definitely a keto friendly recipe. Um, what we have here is we have our uh, cast iron skillet heating up over a little bit of medium high heat. And we are going to add a little bit of avocado oil in my stove. Seems to be a little bit uneven, but make sure we get that oil all over in the pan very well. We're going to let it heat until it just starts to smoke a little bit. Yeah, that is warm. In the meantime, while that is heating up, we want to take our steak. I already have one side seasoned, but we want to season season our steak. I like to use the Montreal steak seasoning. Uh, you can use um, salt, pepper, all that good stuff. But Montreal salt, uh, Montreal steak seasoning is one of my favorites to use. All right, our pan is just starting to smoke. What we want to do this is fairly important. We're going to take our steak. You always want to lay away from you in the pan. Don't lay towards you if you don't want it to spit back at you. We're going to let this cook for oh, three or four minutes per side. So it forms a nice crust on the steak. Now normally I am a, uh, a grilled steak person, but um, cast iron is also a lot of fun too because you get to add the butter and the fresh herbs and get to feel like a chef as you're, you're spooning your, um, your butter based over the top of your, um, over the top of your steak. I'm just gonna grab my base and spoon. This is a ribeye steak. I normally buy my steaks on sale. Um, you know, they can be a little bit expensive. I will buy them on sale and then I'll freeze them and then thaw them out and use them as, uh, as the urge hits. Now, if you try to move your steak in the cast iron pan and it doesn't move or it doesn't release from the pan, it's not ready to move. Don't pull it up. Don't let it, uh, you know, don't let it pull apart. Um, when it is done, it will release, especially if, you're, if your pan is seasoned well. Um, I'm not going to cover quite so much on, on pan care on here, but um, you do want to make sure that your pan is seasoned. Uh, you, you wash it, make sure it's nice and clean, and then remove any and all moisture from the pan. Uh, what I like to do is after I wash it, I'll take the pan out um, and set it on the stove and turn the burner on just to get um, all of the, the water evaporated off of it. And then I will take a little bit of oil and I'll rub the oil on, onto the pan, give it another coat of, um, of oil, and then heat the pan up till the, um, till the oil starts to smoke and then remove it from the heat. Clean and oiled and you're ready to go for the next round. It's not releasing yet, so we just let it cook.
should be ready any second here. Look at that color on the on the steak. Now that we've flipped it, we're gonna add three, well we'll start with two tablespoons of butter into the, the cast iron. Uh, the, but roughly about one to two cloves of garlic. Um, you can add whole fresh garlic, I just don't have any on hand. So I'm using the garlic that comes, um, I get it from Costco, and it is, uh, you know, already minced, just garlic. It, it's not quite as good as whole fresh garlic, but it is um, still pretty, pretty good, it fits the need. Two sprigs, two small, oh, I guess I only have one. No, I do have two. Two fresh little sprigs of thyme from the garden. Um, if you can uh, buy them from the store, the fresh herbs are gonna make a huge difference. I have got some fresh rosemary from the garden. Toss a little rosemary into our pan. Our butter is melted. And some people may ask, does that really make a difference? And it, it does, because if you have these fresh herbs from the garden, you can smell it at right when it hits the pan all of those oils are released and it's just a wonderful wonderful smell and we just take our our garlic and, and herb butter and we're gonna spoon it over the top you can feel the nice crust on the steak it's just so smells so good i wish you could i wish you could smell that you know, the, the the rosemary and the thyme is, is just infusing into the butter and, and the oil and it's getting into the meat. The garlic here up on top is, is um, you know, infused into the oil and the butter. All right, butter's getting a little bit cooked down. We'll add another tablespoon of butter, let that melt down and we'll use it for basting. Now, one of the important things with steak is you're going to want to let it rest after you cook it. Um, a steak like this, you're going to want to let rest about four or five minutes after you cook it. Um, thicker steaks, you want to rest uh, the same amount of time that you cook them. This steak is only about an inch or so thick. Look at that. Oh, I can't wait. The other thing you'll know, like with a ribeye and some other steaks, you have this fat along the edge. Uh, what we're going to do is we'll take our tongs and we'll, you know, cook down and render that fat after after this side is is released, which it just has. Oh, a little bit stuck here. That's the edge. That's just the edge of the pan, though. Need a little bit more time on this side. Crank up the heat, get it good and hot. Might not have been hot enough. If you have the garlic, you can rub it on top, rub the herbs on top, put them in the oil. Trust me, this, these herbs, the flavor from these herbs will be on the meat. Just gonna cook down some of the fat that's on the steak. If I had a little bit bigger pan, this would be a little easier, but...
that is it. We'll let this rest for about four or five minutes. Now when you clean, clean this cast iron, I'm gonna remove it from the heat, but when you clean the cast iron, you wanna clean it when it's warm. You don't wanna clean it when it's hot. If you add it to cold water, it could um, crack. So let it, let it cool till it's a manageable temperature, but not fully cold. Here is our steak. We are about to enjoy this fully with a salad, but people have seen salad. This was our cast iron cooked ribeye steak.